there are going to be no loot boxes in Warcraft Arc Light Rumble, according to the developers. So today we're going to go over that and more official information for the Warcraft mobile game what's going on guys cheers it's been a few days since my first impressions of the new warcraft mobile game so i wanted to go over some of the things that i got wrong in that video because it was legitimately a first impressions and there just wasn't that much official information regarding some of the things that i was speculating on so the first thing that we have to talk about which is the most important and that is loot boxes now there were signs on the google play store that randomized items would be available for purchase in Warcraft Arclight Rumble, which is according to the developers, not true. So I don't know if the Google Play Store is just displaying wrong information or if there was some confusion in translation or whatever the case might be. In the same vein as loot boxes, they have also confirmed no NFT support for Warcraft Arclight Rumble. And they've also said that they're going to have no gotcha mechanics as well, which a lot of people I think are going to be surprised about these claims from the developers because it's a mobile game, right? We're kind of used to these monetization tactics for mobile games especially obviously the free to play ones but we'll just have to wait and see exactly how the game is monetized once it comes out on top of that the in-game shop does have a weekly cap so you cannot purchase unlimited amounts of the minis in that shop or the leaders that show up in that shop as of right now it looks like the shop is capped at purchasing 2100 gold per week that comes in the form of a single coin pouch which gives you 500 gold and then you can buy up to two of the coin chests which give you 800 gold each and from what I've seen from screenshots of the game it looks like some of the minis cost anywhere from 350 to 400 gold and you can also spend gold to sort of refresh the leader in the shop as well so if the cap per week is only 2100 you're only going to be able to buy five or six minis per week I guess unless some of them are cheaper but regardless that's good because it when the game comes out there's going to be about 60 in the game so you're not going to be able to whale your way up and buy everything in the game on day one you will have to probably play for a couple of weeks in order to unlock everything that you might want it's also worth noting that the shop will not have duplicates apparently so if you already own minis or have maxed out a mini perhaps then they won't show up there which is good because then that means that they're not going to artificially cause you to not obtain a mini in hopes that you'll continue playing next week to see if it comes up in the shop so again that's a good thing and because this shop is randomized and different for each player perhaps that's why the Google Play Store says that it offers random items for sale because they don't come in a loot box but they're different for everybody so maybe that's what they're talking about so I'm cautiously optimistic about this monetization strategy now again this is a mobile game that is free to play so you know I'm very familiar with free to play mobile games and I do know that typically games come out and they're very free to play friendly and then as time progresses as players get very invested in the game that's usually when you see maybe new bundles added to the shop or new maybe power creep with different uh, characters that are added to games uh, but at least on release I am going to be cautiously optimistic and hopefully the game is good and stays in that sort of acceptable zone of yes there is monetization but it's not like insane like it is for some games that we played here on the channel the next thing that I got sort of wrong about this is that the game is going to be apparently primarily focused on PVE and perhaps there will be an emphasis on co-op and that's going to be one of the things that sets it apart from Clash Royale and we're going to talk more about the differences from Clash Royale here in a moment because I did draw a lot of parallels and I think that on a first impressions it does look very similar but when the game comes out you're going to be able to level up your minis through at least 70 different single player missions either solo or with your friends and i guess they're going to have different strategies based on the units you're fighting and the map design and you're going to have to pick the right minis to give you the best advantage regarding dungeons and raids i speculated that these would come periodically and it looks like that is the case so dungeons will refresh every week and raids apparently will refresh every month so i was pretty on track there with my assumption but it's nice to see that officially on blizzard's website so it looks like they've sort of focused on pve initially and also just built in a pvp aspect as well which i think is what's going to give the game most of its longevity and is also another way 
for you to gain experience by fighting your friends or other players now when it comes to in-game strategy and picking the right minis it looks like there's going to be a lot of depth to that strategy we have five different families of units you obviously have the alliance the horde the black rock the beasts and the undead now you can mix and match these different families in your mini collection so if you want to play with a you know a certain horde leader and then also use some alliance minis that is something that you can do i'm wondering if there's going to be some sort of synergy if you decide to use mostly alliance or mostly horde if they're just going to work better together that way but on top of that there's also a rock paper scissors strategy built in as well because you have melee units ranged units and flying units so it looks like the ranged units are going to counter flying and flying are going to counter melee and melee will likely counter ranged and on top of that we talked about the talents in my first impressions video so with all that being said it looks like there's going to be a lot to offer from a strategic perspective for this game which is really nice to see and the fact that there's going to be so much emphasis on pve at least from the beginning is going to give players a ton of content to explore all these different combinations and build their strategy and see how that goes we do have more information about what each family is going to be allegedly good at so if we're looking at the official blizzard website here it says the alliance family units are going to be overflowing with defense and spells so this perhaps are going to have more of your tanky units i think that would make a lot of sense based on the description the horde they say is great for overpowering your enemies so my assumption is that if the alliance are more defensive the horde are more offensive and perhaps they just deal more damage but they can't take it as much sort of like a traditional glass cannon uh it says the hardened black rock will sear a hole in your enemy's defenses so i'm assuming that the black rock units will probably deal more damage to your enemy towers that makes a lot of sense to me uh the undead say it says here they will deliver a skeleton of troops on the battlefield so that immediately tells me skeleton army from clash royale right you're gonna be able to just dump a ton of undead units on the field and sort of overwhelm with just sheer numbers i think that's a unique and interesting uh, aspect to go for that particular family and then finally uh for the beast it says a stampede literally of beasts from the plains and jungles of Azeroth will overwhelm your foe. So I honestly don't really know what that means in particular, if maybe you set up like barriers and the beasts can sort of jump over them, or if beasts can maybe ignore some sort of aggro. I, I don't really know. It's less clear what the beasts will, or what will set the beasts apart. Now, each of these five families is going to have leaders for that particular family. So here it says the Alliance leaders support defense, healing and stealth tactics as well as heavy use of spells the horde leaders look like they encourage building momentum through earning additional gold fast attacking troops and enemy control with area of effect stuns so that's gonna be really cool to see the black rock leaders reward you for playing heavy hitting flying troops and searing elemental magic users to burn opponents to a crisp so that's gonna be cool it looks like black rock you know obviously dragons and stuff is going to be really sweet to see on the battlefield here it says the undead leaders are going to be using necromancy to grow stronger over time so particular leaders might gain more power as you cast more of those spells and it also says here that baron can take advantage of the sheer number of units on the field by draining their health and siphoning it to make him last longer on the battlefield i suppose and finally the beast leaders i guess will be good at disabling enemy defenses and helping you overwhelm those defenses over time so that's going to be really interesting i like how they've sort of broken it down into different groups and giving them sort of different unique strengths and that's going to give you different ways to tackle the same objective so you may actually have some replayability there by going back and playing a level that you've already beaten perhaps you beat it with a different leader in a different combination the second time around and maybe you gain more experience that way or you earn something for doing it multiple times now when it comes to similarities to clash royale i obviously talked about that a lot in my first impressions video and the developers were asked about that they were literally asked like how 
how is Warcraft Arc Light Rumble different from Clash Royale? And the developers admitted that they played a ton of Clash Royale, obviously when doing research for this game. And I'm glad they just admitted that because it's like, it's obvious, right? But there's going to be a couple of key distinctions between this and Clash Royale. The first being that it is primarily PVE focused. So getting in groups, doing those dungeons, doing those raids, progressing through the 70 levels that are there at launch. And I assume over time, they'll probably add more. So that's good to know. Whereas obviously Clash Royale is primarily PVP. We've also talked about the five different families, but also the leaders of those families. So building your army around a particular leader is different than Clash Royale. Clash Royale, you just have different cards of different rarities and there's no like central main powerful unit. They also obviously have the rock, paper, scissors system, but also the maps themselves are built with different height levels. So obviously we have flying in the game and that's not necessarily different from Clash Royale. There's plenty of flying units in that game as well. But in this game, it looks like there's going to be high ground versus low ground as well. And if you are on the high ground attacking players coming from the low ground, you will, I guess, either deal more damage or have some sort of advantage in those scenarios, which makes sense. I mean, that is like actually how war was waged. You have an advantage if you have a high ground. And so that mechanic being built into the maps is really interesting. It's going to add a lot more replayability. And that's something that I talked about in my first impression video saying how the fact that there's so many different maps is going to add that replayability and the fact that they've also added this mechanic as well isn't going to make it just feel like a reskin uh of the same map it's actually going to function differently if there is varying height levels which i think is going to be really interesting finally the last thing i want to talk about is support for pc because they very clearly stated that they were building this game for ios and android they've advertised that everywhere and they haven't said anything about the availability to get it on pc however if you open the battle.net program on your computer you will see some uh, advertisement for this game so many players thought that okay perhaps we will be able to get it on pc even though it's technically a mobile game however it seems to be the case that as of right now they are not focused on building a pc version of this game now of course that could change in the future and this game depending on how it's played could play on other things right i know that there were some people asking if it will eventually be available for the nintendo switch um that's you know we will have to wait and see but as of right now it seems like they are not building this game for PC and specifically just for iOS and Android. However, the question does come up. Can you use emulators such as BlueStacks? And it sounds like they will be allowing emulator use for this game because I mean, at the end of the day, you know, is an emulator really going to give you a huge advantage in a game like this? I don't really think so. Now, if you're talking about a MOBA or if you're talking about a first person shooter, then of course you have a huge advantage with using a mouse and keyboard. But in this game, it's more of a strategy game and the units are sort of moving on their own based on where you place them. So I don't think the developers are too worried about emulators. And thus, it seems like we will be able to use emulators such as blue stacks when the game does come out, which I'm excited for, because as a content creator, that just makes my life a lot easier playing it on PC, recording videos, streaming, etc. Okay. That is pretty much it. That's everything I wanted to update you guys on for the game. I just wanted to, you know, release this to be more clear, right? Because a lot of the things in my first impressions video have already been answered and I didn't want to leave sort of speculation and misinformation out there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did drop a thumbs up on the video, subscribe. If you're new around here, comment down below, if you're excited to hear some of the news coming out, especially about the lack of loot boxes. I'm happy to hear that. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.